Thank you. Good evening to all, and uh, I'm very pleased to present you an uh, important uh, teacher and professor come from uh, other country, mm -hmm. and in particular, Professor Oje Samangji is an associate professor and the head of gastronomy and culinary health department of Onyugin uh, University of Istanbul, and is uh, very uh, specialized in the modernization of Ottoman culinary culture, uh, Ottoman palace and Istanbul cuisine, Ottoman Turkish food history and food historiography. Then, uh, uh, thank you very much, Arjun, for your uh, disponibility. Have you uh, 30, 45 minutes for your conference? And after, it's possible to have 10, uh, 15 minutes for uh, questions of students. Please, thank you very okay. much, uh, and uh, welcome in uh, uh, virtual Polenza University. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Professor Corvo, for uh, inviting you for your invitation. Yes, uh, I already visited your campus. It's a beautiful campus, uh, Polenzo. It is a pleasure to be with you. Yes, I will try to share my presentation. Today, we will talk about the culinary culture of Turkey. We will talk about a little bit history, about the different culinary heritage, which make up today's Turkish culinary culture, which is really diversified due to the different historical heritage, due to the uh, condition related to climate, to terroir. Uh, so I will... I'm trying to share. Okay, can you see my light? That's okay, that's okay. Oh, now it is lost, I think. Uh, can you see still? No. No. Professor. <laughs> no, okay, I will try again. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Ah, because it, it will be much more fun if we can share. Okay. Mm, can you share? Okay. Uh, can you see? Yes. 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 Uh, absolutely. When Thank I, you. I, I can't can you see the changing slide also? Okay, good. Uh, okay, because I'm not sure if we like the slide you see or not. So, uh, the title of the presentation is Turkish Cuisine, a Culinary Journey Through History. Uh, um, it is, I shared different slides, different picture here, representing different culinary culture. For example, uh, at the, at the, on the left, you are seeing a sherbet, a famous beverage of, of Turkey, made from different fruits, etc. Uh, we have a representation of Byzantine culture here, fishermen, Ottomans eating by hand in the middle, etc. You are seeing now the Turkish map of Turkey. Can you see? Because I'm not sure if you can see or not. Uh, hello. Okay. <laughs> um. This is strange. Is to not uh, continuing uh, the slide. Uh, I don't know why I can't. Yes, I don't understand. Sorry, maybe I should. I will try once again. Uh, I'm trying to understand when I change the slide, can you see it or not? Jimile, I think you are there. Uh, can you help no. me if you can see my. Okay. Now, yes. Okay, good. Now, can you. Okay, I have just a question. When I change the slide, can you see? 
for example, now I'm shaving Mesopotamia. Okay. Uh, because unfortunately, uh, no, that's good. Can you? Okay, maybe. Maybe yes, I. Yes, that's good. Stop. Because what I'm trying to understand when I change the slide, if you can turn them on now, because I can't see you. I may hide here. I have checked. Arthur, yes. Okay. It's good. Um, in order to change the slide, what I, what should I do? Oh my God. Sorry, I couldn't start. Um, I have difficulty to uh, <laughs> to move the slide one by one. But it's in the below. Below uh, you. Just in order to move the slide. You could find the uh, below. I have. You should find the the yes, I will this is the last time if I can't do it, I will give up <laughs> to share slide because the system is so unfamiliar for me, maybe that's why. Okay, okay, good. Then is to continue with the or uh, with the computer by computer or directly by the the blackboard. Come on, I'm continuing by my com uh, computer. Okay, so yeah. uh, Turkey uh, is situated between two continents, as you know, between Europe and Asia. And uh, Turkey has a generous climate, different climate at the same time, both Mediterranean in the south, on the west, and also in the center, a very um, dry climate suitable for the cultivation of wheat, etc. On the east, the climate is really hard and difficult, and the uh, climate um, shape the uh, food culture there. And also, Black Sea uh, region also has special characteristics. The history of Anatolia goes back really to the earliest time, to the Neolithic Revolution, around to 10,000 BC. The first agricultural activities started first in Fertile Crescent, and Fertile Crescent make part of Turkey. And the cultivation of wheat started firstly here with barley. And in Turkey uh, territories, there are some endemic types of wheat, the earliest type of wheat, which are really important and which became popular nowadays. So the history is really old in Turkey. And when we look to the food culture, we see the uh, food heritage which are inherited since the ancient era and then from the ancient Greek, Roman and Byzantine era and from the Seljuks, Turkish people who migrated from Central Asia and also with the Ottoman Empire which lasted more than 600 years. Over the centuries different um, ethnic groups, religious groups lived together on these lands, Muslims, Jewish people, Christian people, Armenian, Greeks, etc., Arabs, and the culmination of the food culture of different religious group uh, gave birth to a, a really multicultural food culture, which is developed during the Ottoman era, which lasted more than 600 years from the 14th century to the beginning of the 20th century. And after the dissolution of the Ottoman Empire, although the territories are divided between Greece and Turkey, Bulgaria, Romania, Egypt, Iraq, Syria, etc., we see the continuation of a common kind of a food culture, which can be described as Middle East food culture or Ottoman food culture, which has some common points uh, between different countries. When we look to the historical background uh, to understand which are the most important historical heritages which survived until Turkish cuisine, um, if, we, if we don't go into the details, into the ancient eras, uh, I mean 
uh, after the Neolithic Revolution, uh, during the Hittite era, etc. We should ask first, who are the Turkish people? Turkish people are nomadic people who migrated from Central Asia around uh, 11th century. Gradually, they moved from Central Asia uh, toward Iran, and from there, they arrived to Anatolia. They were nomadic people, and their food habits are based to animal food products, uh, especially yogurt and cheese, but dried yogurt, which can be described as a cheese, and some portable food item like dried bread, very thin sheet of bread. Here we see that a lady, she's preparing this yufka bread. And also these are the examples of dried bread, which are known as yufka today in Turkish cuisine. Uh, the consumption of yogurt starts since the Central Asia and became one of the important food items in contemporary Turkish food culture. Other portable food items like cured and spiced meat, like pastrami, or a type of special spice sausage called sujuk are other examples. And, um, When Turkish tribes, they arrived to Anatolia, there they met with Byzantine culture. Because, you know, uh, from the 5th century to the 15th century, the Eastern Roman Empire uh, ruled over um, most of part of Anatolia, including Balkans and Greece. And Constantinopolis was the capital city. And so we see the uh, a kind of clash of food culture between Byzantine and nomadic Turkish food culture, which was influenced from the medieval Arab cuisine also. In the Middle Ages, from 8th to 12th century, we see the rise of a really developed and sophisticated Arab cuisine, which became a model to be adopted, adopted by other Muslim culture uh, like Seljuk Empire and later by Ottoman Empire. So some of the food items uh, are inherited from medieval Arab cuisine, and the Seljuk state was the first Turkish state uh, established in Anatolia um, since the uh, 11th century. And, for example, if we have to give some example, some of the dishes which are inherited from medieval Arab cuisine and both Seljuk cuisine, we can talk of rice pilaf, which will become an important dish during the Ottoman era and still important in today's Turkish cuisine. Some sorts of sweet dishes made with syrup, made with sugar, and sugar was something really, really expensive in the Middle Ages and will continue to be expensive until the modern era. So it was a mark of the distinction, the consumption of sweet dishes. Here we see an example of helva, which is made from flour and butter and sugar, probably. The sherbets, which are the important non-alcoholic beverage in the Ottoman cuisine, started to be prepared in this era. So, after the Seljuk era, uh, we should talk a little bit about the Byzantine heritage, uh, because um, Byzantine heritage also gave birth to the emergence of a kind of cuisine based on fish and fish culture, especially where in Istanbul. Um, sorry for, again, I'm not able to change the slide again. Um, so during the Byzantine era, especially after the conquest um, of Istanbul by uh, Ottomans by Mehmet II, we see that 
uh, Istanbul will become the capital city and we see that all of the um, Christian people who were uh, the, the who were the common people under the flag of the Byzantine Empire will continue to live in the Ottoman Empire and they will continue to um, prepare their own food items and they will continue to respect their um, religious custom, etc. So today, in, especially in Istanbul, and also in some part of the Asian coast, uh, we see some of the uh, inherited food items and food preparation techniques from the Byzantine era. For example, Botargo, the south of the Mullet, called Otarikon, was considered to be a delicacy since the by the miracle in some of the Istanbul market you can find. Uh, in Turkish season, most of the fish names are derived from the ancient Greek. Uh, mackerel, bonito, tiny bluefish, etc. These are some of the examples of fish, especially uh, bonito and bluefish, refer and palomas are two uh, important emblematic fish uh, in Istanbul. Other examples can be this Easter bread, known as Pascale Cherry. Today in Istanbul pastry shops, it is one of the common uh, sweet pastry that we can find uh, during the whole year. Of course, without the eggs, this is for the celebration of Easter. Easter. La Carda Bonito preserved in brine, it is one of the important meze kind of Turkish tapas uh, for uh, wine and rakı etc. The examples are not few. Uh, we can give also other examples of Byzantine dish, a uh, broad bean puree, which is called fava, which was one of the land dish prepared by the Christian Greek people during their um, land days in which they don't eat any animal food product. Era is a long era and at the beginning, Ottoman state was literally 400 around easy and will become a really huge empire which will control also the Mediterranean Sea. The territories will be enlarged, especially during the 16th century, and all of the conquered lands uh, will contribute the, to the formation of a rich food culture based in Ottoman palace, which is in Istanbul. Different food items were imported, imported uh, to the city and the best quality of food items uh, were preferred in the palace. The Ottoman palace became a center where the, um, the food culture will be developed with the presence of lots of cooks and servants and with the presence of population. Uh, it was the center of the state also. Here we see an Ottoman cook and nice um, Porcelain, Chinese one especially, and the culture of spoon. Um, it was arrived to Istanbul. It will be one of the important places to visit. Uh, a huge palace, not a vertical palace, a horizontal palace, which reminds us also the nomadic culture of the Turkish tribes. Uh, Constituted of Fort Court, um, more than 2,000 people, they were living inside the palace. Not only the Sultan and his family, but the um, military uh, persons, the administrative units and the servants uh, are present here. So it was important. Um, I said that different food items were provided to the palace kitchen from the different parts of the empire. Here we see a small map, but think that the honey of Greek islands was good, and so the honey was imported from Greek islands, rice from Egypt, uh, apricots from Damas, etc. And it gives the presence of a rich ingredients in which different culinary heritage combined and gave birth to a sophisticated cuisine. If uh, we can try to summarize what kind of ingredients were used in this cuisine, which will become a model for the rest of the empire. Um, again, 
series are important, mostly wheat, of course, because wheat constituted the basis of the uh, Ottoman cuisine and today Turkish also Turkish cuisine. Bread is the staple food, and also wheat flour is, is used in the preparation of different savory pastry, etc. And also wheat is used in the production of bulgur, which is a cracked wheat, which is prepared by boiling wheat and by drying and by um, pounding. Uh, for the preference of meat, mostly small animals like sheep and lamb preferred. Dairy products are important, especially yogurt, butter and cheese. Olive oil is present, but the olive oil was limited uh, in the past compared to today because olive oil was uh, produced in limited quantities and it was used also in other things in uh, making soup or in enlightenment, etc. Vegetables and fruits are important, both dry and fresh. Spices are important because Istanbul is an important uh, trade center and the spices imported from the India, from India, like cinnamon, cloves, or cardamom and ginger um, are used and uh, can be found in Istanbul market. Today, there is a spice bazaar in Istanbul and uh, this spice bazaar um, established in the 17th century still is one of the important spice bazaar in Istanbul. Um, vegetables and fruits um, consumed in Istanbul were grown in the city and also surrounding the city. All of the gardens and wineries provided fruits. Not only fruits and vegetables are used in the kitchen, but petals of flowers are used in the preparation of some syrups, etc. Et uh, milk and yogurt and dairy products also were provided from the city. Here we see the kitchens of the palace constituted of 10 different units in which prepared food for more than 2,000 people in the 16th century. Here we have a gravure from the 18th century. Here you see the dome of the kitchen. It is in the second courtyard, etc. Um, based on the traveler accounts, um, witnesses and also uh, images, gravures made by them, we have some illustration of Ottoman cooks. Here we have the Ashibashi head cook in the Ottoman palace in the 18th century. In the center, we see the helva maker, sweet dish maker, etc. Food carrier is called tabla chair. All of the foods are prepared in the kitchens and the palace is huge and the foods is, is, is taken from the kitchen to the different uh, room in the palace. So it was an issue. How people were eating, they were eating on a table without using forks and knives until the 19th century, until the modernization era. Only spoons are used for eating soups and pilaus and drinking fruit compote called hosha. Um, here we see six people uh, on table and lots of servants waiting with dishes at their hands. The dishes was presented one by one, and the whole meal is not lasted for a long time. It was finished in a short period of time. The conversation started after the meal with the accompaniment of coffee after the 16th century and sherbets and desserts, etc. Here we have another um, illustration. It is an Ottoman miniature. And here we see people that are eating as soup, maybe they have their spoon at their hand, etc. Uh, in the, mm, the publication of Ottoman cookbook starts uh, in the 19th century, but before the published cookbook, we have some cooking manuscripts compared to medieval Arab uh, culture or compared to Europe. To Europe uh, we have very few cooking manuscripts before the 19th century. The first one belonged to the 15th century. It was uh, written by a, an Ottoman doctor called Shirvani. The name of the cookbook was Kitabi Tabi, and originally it was a translation of a 13th century medieval Arabic cookbook written in the Abbasid era. Uh, the book is interesting because the book witnessed the connection, the relation between medicine and food culture in the Ottoman uh, era also. Maybe you heard about numeral theory, uh, which was um, started to be 
codified by Hippocrates and later by Galen, this humoral, humoral theory was also constituted the basis of Ottoman medicine and according to the system, food was considered as a, as a medicine uh, and all of the food items have some quality with different temperament of uh, people. So there is a direct connection between medicine and food, especially before the uh, modern era in the Ottoman culture, I mean before the 19th century. Until the 18th century, we don't have other cooking manuscripts, surprisingly. For the 18th century, we have a couple, three manuscripts we know. After the 19th century, the publication of books starts in the Ottoman Empire, and we see also the publication of cookbooks, which constitute our basis sources in food history. In order to visualize a little bit what kind of food they were eating in the classical era in the 16th century, for example, I may give an example of an imperial piece which is really which constituted of 40 dishes. Different kind of rice pilaf with different colors because we are in the medieval age, the colorfulness of the dishes is considered to be aesthetic and important. Rice pilaf, yellow pilaf, etc. Meat is important, both still one bread, one with some dried fruits or with some pulses are present. And also uh, lots of kebabs, which are important, which constitute the main dish of the feast. Because it is a menu of celebration, the menu is really rich and they have some unusual animal like uh, peacock. No, they don't eat all the time, but it is a celebration time. That's why apart from mutton and chicken and goose, there is this dish also. And ordinary, regular meal was much more modest. For example, this is a daily lunch menu prepared in the 17th century for the Imperial Council in the top couple palace. It is constituted of six dish. Again, we have the rice pilaf, a chicken soup, baklava, a kind of stuffed called vegetable stuff with minced meat, flavored with spices, flavored with called beret and a lamb kebab. Already I explained the style of eating table manners. On the left, we have the traditional style called Alla Turka. Alla Turka is a bird, is a, um, I think, dried from Italian firstly, and Alla Franca. Alla Turka means in Turkish style, Alla Franca means in French style. The new table manners, I mean, the use of forks and knives, eating on a high table, sitting on a chair, uh, will be adopted from the European culture in the 19th century after 1840s with the beginning of the modernization and this style of eating will be named as Alda Franca style and I will conclude uh, also at the end what were the other novelties uh, which will be in the 19th century. Already I explained a little bit different types of dishes which were present in classical way in the Ottoman cuisine so soups and kebabs and grease are important. Consumption of offal is important. All parts of animal are used in the preparation of soups or other foodstuffs. Vegetables are considered really much and they are not used as garniture, but they are used in different style, cooked with meat, lamb or without meat, um, like stews or stuffed wine are important. Um, just to give you an idea, the kebab Kebab in Europe is known as general kebab everywhere, but normally kebab is the generic name of the roasted meat, I mean grilled meat, and so different types of kebabs are present in the past and today in Turkey. Um, eggs are considered also like a dish, a kind of poached egg, so the yogurt is important for example, and also eggs can be cooked with vegetables like spinach, onion, etc. Salads also are present, but not very complicated one. Uh, desserts are really important, al although before the 19th century and not even before the 20th century, consumption of dessert was a luxury for the common people, devoted only to celebration dates for religious festivals or for weddings, etc. But consumption of desserts was an ordinary thing in the palace for the rich table. Uh, desserts can be grouped in different uh, groups, so like one pastry in syrup, like baklava or shredded. Like, some kinds of 
cooking prepared with milk, some fruit desserts, lots of different types of jams, and also beverage called as sherbets, etc. Uh, and, and maybe, as you know, sherbets will give an inspiration in the 17th century to sorbet dough, and sorbet dough will be known as sorbet in French cuisine. So there is a direct relation also uh, between Italian sorbet and sherbet, according to researchers. Uh, to visualize the old type of baklava here, we have an illustration. Two Janissaries, I mean, two Ottoman military men, they are taking a tray of baklava. Uh, all of the foodstuffs have some ritual meaning also. Uh, all of the um, important days related to religion or to the changes in season or um, passage of rite uh, during the lifetime of a person was celebrated with the preparation of special food. Baklava was special. Uh, the baklava distributed uh, every 15th uh, day of Ramadan uh, to Janissaries. And the acceptance of baklava tray given by the Ottoman Sultan, by the Ottoman, by the Janissaries, mark that they are happy, they don't go every world. If they don't eat, if they refuse to eat, it, it shows that they will go to Vidalin. So food has also a symbolic meaning, a tool of power for the Sultan. The Sultan, the Ottoman Sultan, by feeding his people, also ensures his power so it was used as a tool during the huge festivals, celebration organized by the Ottoman uh, Sultan in order to celebrate the wedding of a princess or the circumcision of a, a prince, etc. So lots of things to tell, but I'm just telling some of the important features. Coffee, uh, I should talk a little bit coffee. Coffee uh, started to be consumed around 1554 in, in 1554 in Istanbul. As you know, coffee is originated from Ethiopia, and the consumption will start first early in the uh, Arabian Peninsula. But the real popularization of the coffee will be realized during the Ottoman era in the 16th century. And we see the rise of a coffee culture, although it was prohibited from time to time, especially the coffee houses are prohibited because this a center of uh, and also a center of a uh, place where food sites, etc. A, a real Ottoman miniature from the 16th century, and we see in the inside of the coffee house and the Ottoman gentleman playing chess and black gammon, etc. A coffee will be introduced to Europe by way of Ottoman merchants in the 16th century by different means, from Marseille, from Vienna, from London, etc. And the coffee will become an important beverage in the 17th century, also in Europe. The Turkish coffee uh, is a part of the uh, UNESCO intangible heritage today, under the label of Turkey. The consumption of wine and liquor is a problematic issue, but we know that uh, it was consumed. More than raku, raku is a type of uzo, if you know the Greek uzo or arak. Um, it's a distilled beverage flavored with anise. Wine was much more popular be before the 19th century in the Ottoman Empire. Tavern, that we call mehane, uh, is a culture inherited from the Byzantine era. It continued to be imported in the Ottoman Empire. The production of the wine and other uh, records was allowed to non-Muslim in the Ottoman Empire. And normally, the consumption of alcohol beverage was forbidden to the Muslim population. But uh, based on different sources, we know that the consumption existed among the Muslim people, even in the Ottoman palace. Because uh, there was a culture of um, gatherings in garden uh, with wine and with uh, poetry and with music in the among the Ottoman elites. It was a part of their culture, so uh, it was a little bit um, different. Uh, although it was forbidden, we you know that people they were consuming uh, wine and raku. But unlike the Italians or Spanish.
Spanish or French people, wine or record did not accompany directly to dinner or to the lunch, to meal, but uh, the consumption of wine and record was devoted to special tables called Chilingir Sofrası or uh, in the tavern. And there were also some rules uh, what kind of people should accompany to the wine and record, not uh, real uh, dishes, but small measures, etc. Before the rise of the restaurants uh, in uh, Istanbul, uh, before the 19th century, street food sellers and also small food shops were important, especially in big cities like Istanbul. <coughs> people, people, uh, especially people who work they, outside, they were eating from these shops, etc. 19th century was an era of changes. The new flavors will be introduced to the cuisine, especially vegetables originated from America, like tomatoes and potato and uh, red and uh, green peppers, etc., uh, which are in the, which are originated from America, will be integrated into the cuisine during the 19th century in real time. Uh, and today, in Turkish cuisine, without tomato or tomato paste, we can't imagine a Turkish cuisine. They will become an important part. The 19th century is important because we see the modernization of the Ottoman social, military, and political system, which um, gave birth also to the adoption of some new uh, cultural uh, items inspired from Europe, including new eating manner that uh, we call Alafranca style. So, uh, among the Ottoman elites, starting from the Ottoman uh, palace, new table manners will be started to be adopted in a long period of time, the adoption of new table manner will continue also during the Republican era in the 20th century. In the 19th century, the publication of Ottoman recipes are important. We have lots of cookbooks in Ottoman and Armenian, and these cookbooks reflect this multicultural, multi-ethnic cuisine flavored with some new European dishes, because with the adoption of new uh, table manners, we see the introduction of, of some new uh, dishes adopted from Europe or new culinary techniques like garniture, sauce, uh, or some cakes and pastry, etc. So the preference of porcelain also will change in among the elite. In the past, Chinese porcelain was preferred, but in the 19th century, European ones will be preferred, like Mason, Limoges, etc. The content of the dishes or the menus will change uh, really. The flavors will change. The cuisine will become less spicy, but still uh, more spicy than today's Turkish cuisine. Uh, what is uh, different? Some new food items will be introduced. So I like to, to see that with the adoption of new table manners, the organization of Diplomatic banquets in European style since the 1850s in the Ottoman Palace will be important also. So the um, Korean guests, especially high dignitaries uh, from Europe, will be started to be uh, welcomed in huge banquets organized in European, European style, like that one. For example, this is a banquet organized in honor of Napoleon III by Ottoman Sultan Abdulaziz in 1850 before in an Ottoman palace, a, a totally European looking uh, banquet organized and the content of the dishes also will, will reflect the tendency of 19th century European gastronomy. I mean, the presence of high French cuisine is really remarkable. We have some examples of menu that we have from the Ottoman archives or from other sources. And when we look to the inside of the menu, we see the presence of French uh, dishes. Here we see potage or kernel de volaille or boucher à la rin, filet de sol, etc., omar à la polonaise. We have few Ottoman dishes, especially bureks and pilavs, and most of the time desserts are some examples. So we can uh, summarize that um, end of the 19th century witness um, the um, clash of the Western cuisine with Ottoman cuisine among the elites, of course, I'm not talking among the uh, whole population, but uh, we see that uh, Ottoman cuisine will adopt some of the 
dishes and techniques uh, and some of them did not. Um, the Ottoman Empire will be distributed at the beginning of the 20th century after 1980. Uh, and the rise of the Turkish state in 1923 um, will be re resulted with the dissolution of the old Ottoman territory here with the yellow heart certainly by the old Ottoman state. Although the Ottoman Empire will be dissolved in the 20th century, we see the presence of a kind of an Ottoman culinary empire in all different regions, mentioned as by Bert Fagner, a scholar. Uh, despite the disintegration of the Ottoman political empire, we can still see the survivor of a large region, which could be called the Ottoman culinary empire. That's why today, we have lots of similar food items in all these old uh, Ottoman territories. We share the same food culture with some changes also. For example, if we can give an example, the same baklava. This is a good smell baklava. This is a homemade Anatolian baklava. Syrian style, another one. With different uh, nuance, with uh, a substitution of the different ingredients, a flavor, a spice, a or a different name. Uh, dishes can be considered as different, but there are lots of common things. So I think I can end. Uh, to summarize, uh, today's Turkish food culture represents a huge uh, history which goes back to the 10th century to Central Asia and which includes different cultural um, features uh, from the medieval Arab food culture, from the Byzantine era, even I don't mention the ancient um, culinary heritage since the uh, Hittite era, or etc. Um, the long uh, Ottoman era, more than 16th century, from the 14th to the 20th century, witnessed different changes. But uh, in the 20th century, with the establishment of Turkish Republic, we see the continuation of this food culture. Today, although uh, we have um, lots of changes, uh, in our food culture, especially in big cities like in Istanbul, I think Turkish food culture represents still traditional features mixed with some new ones. Uh, yeah, I think I can stop here and I can have some questions if you have. Uh, Professor Corvo. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, okay. important, very interesting, uh, and this perfect time. And now uh, it's possible to have uh, many, uh, any questions. There are uh, to your students, uh, Semil, Lefna, H. And uh, in other, eh? it's your student, probably. No, definitely she is my colleague. She was a professor. Ah, okay. Ah, welcome. Welcome. Student AJ, she is my student. Okay. Ah, good. Have you any questions, please? Students or colleagues on the uh, radar? Or other? Are you expecting time? Hi, I have a question. Please. Um, so Possible that you are to video? Uh, my video is not working right now, so I hope that I can. Only... Ah, okay, no problem. Welcome, welcome to this conference. Yes. Um, so I have a Turkish friend, so I have the chance to try some Turkish homemade food before, like manti or susla, like the the sweet huh? thing. Um, so I, yeah, so I just want to ask whether the Turkish cuisine is more influenced by the European side or um, the, the middle, uh, is, is it like largely influenced by European cuisine or by any other cuisine or yeah, that is my question because Turkish is in a very special location. 
So which country influenced the most on the cuisine of Turkey? Um, as I explained, I think the long presence of the Ottoman Empire is important. And during the Ottoman era, the basis of the Turkish cuisine is formed. We can't say that European cuisine influenced much Turkish cuisine. Although I talked about the influence of European food culture at the end of the 19th century, it is really limited. To summarize, in Turkish cuisine, we see the presence of Central Asian nomadic food culture and also the presence of some medieval Arab food culture, but I'm talking about medieval, not today's Arabic food culture. So it is a it is not an influenced cuisine, but it is formed with the combination of different cultural heritage and also special ingredients uh, to the lands. For example, you mentioned about mante. Yes. Mante is a dish which is originated from Central Asia since the 10th century. And uh, yes, mante, mantu is a Chinese word, but it doesn't show that because it is a Chinese word, it is a Chinese dish. Today, mantu is a mantu is a kind of steamed bread in Chinese cuisine, but mantu from Uzbekistan to Tajikistan to Turkey to Azerbaijan is a dish prepared in different manners. Even in Turkey, we have more than 20 different types, Bo boiled one, uh, baked one, small one, and strutlaç. Strutlaç also is an old dish. A Turkish word, strut means milk, ash, ash means ash, a milk dish means. So it is one of the very traditional desserts or in Turkish cuisine. Ah, oh, okay. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you. I hope it helps you. Yes. Okay, other questions, please? I think it is fine. <laughs> so, then I have a question for me, for you. Yes, of course. It's about, about uh, the uh, new influence of migrants' cuisine uh, in, uh, in Turkey. Because, for example, in Italy, it's born a uh, new cuisine is to re recipients, it's a fair, uh, named the fusion food, you know, with some local production and uh, the flavors and uh, uh, recipes about of the other cuisine can mm -hmm. come from, for example, Turkey or uh, Africa, North Africa or Asia. And then mm -hmm. very interesting new idea to create a mixing of these different cuisine. Is the same in uh, Turkey or is uh, there's a more important tradition is about identity identity of uh, Turkish food. Uh, you are talking about contemporary era. I mean, from today. Am I right? Like fusion cuisine. You are mentioning the situation of today in Italy. I think. Yeah. If you are, if I am right, if I understand you well, if you are asking me if we have any. A kind of mixed food with different culture, yes and no. Yeah. Firstly, in Turkey today, geographically we have different regional cuisine, like in Italy. So it is not really easy to define each regional cuisine as the same. So the first, I think, fusion, uh, the the combination of different food culture is with the people who migrated from different regions to the big cities, to Istanbul or to Izmir, etc. So uh, this is the first step because there, although on the basis there are some same techniques, the flavors are different, the techniques are different. For example, uh, the use of hot pepper, paprika, uh, is not as in, as special to Istanbul cuisine, but it become really popular today because since 50 years, uh, lots of migrated people from Southeast 
uh, of Turkey, uh, they important their uh, these future to Istanbul. Um, now we have Syrians, lots of migrated people from Syria in Turkey, and oh, yeah. I, think, I, I, mean, I, I think in ten years or even now we will see some rise of a kind of fusion food between Syrian and Turkish cuisine. But at this point also, Syrian cuisine and Turkish cuisine are not so different. They have some common things, but still there are some nuance changes and it will give a, a new taste maybe. Other than uh, compared to European countries, um, other uh, people who migrated from China or other country did not present in Turkey. So uh, it was not really easy to even find some ethnic food restaurant in Chinese or Japanese. These are some luxury uh, food items for us. So I don't think that this fusion thing is present. But there is another thing which I have to mention. In the world of gastronomy, apart from this traditional cuisine, especially the young generation chefs, they like to create their own cuisine, which reflects a combination of traditional cuisine with modern European techniques. And I think this is fusion. Either they use local ingredients or local techniques, they are inspired also by modern techniques, and um, they created new styles, Sometimes they call their style as new Anatolian cuisine or as new Turkish cuisine. Uh, and I think it resembled a, a little bit to Noel cuisine, uh, which became really popular in 1970s in France. Thank you. Very, very important. This uh, is a very important question in uh, all uh, in all the nations, probably, no, about this situation. And there's another question for you about uh, cooking. Because yes. in Italy, during the uh, pandemic uh, COVID-19, mm -hmm. uh, Italians uh, uh, return to cook. <laughs> uh, it's very interesting for because they have more time, closed bar and restaurants, etc. And then uh, it's, to, it's important to spend more uh, money for uh, expenses, uh, food. And uh, it's the same in your country or... Uh, or different during this uh, one year, the last nine, one year, is because in Italy, uh, until one year ago, there's a decreasing the cook, because the cooking mm -hmm. for causes uh, and uh, for the lunch, uh, stay mm -hmm. uh, out of home. No, it's uh, mm -hmm. because it's, there are many uh, distances between uh, the mm -hmm. location of work and location of live. Of living, and uh, in the evening, in general, there is this not easy to to cook because uh, the people uh, were tired, etc. But during this uh, last year, now is an incredible return mm -hmm. to cook with many important to do and uh, bread, pasta, pizza, sweets, etc. And in Turkey, in Turkey, is the same situation phenomena or is uh, uh, or was different? Um, I think it is the same, but we should differentiate one thing. Uh, in a uh, crowded city like in metropolitan city like in Istanbul, this is the same thing because most of some of the people they were preferring to eat outside or they don't have time to cook, especially women, etc. And cooking became much more. Uh, popular during the pan pandemic uh, era, especially yeah. making bread. Bread became and uh, making okay. sour sourdough bread, a uh, sourdough bread, making some traditional dishes like lahmacun at home uh, became popular. But on the other hand, traditionally compared to United States, for example, cooking at home was still really mm, popular in Turkey. Uh, every mother preferred to cook food for his children in normal time, and the, the, the majority of the population in Turkey, I think, they continued to cook because eating outside, uh, except in, in big cities like Istanbul, Izmir, and Ankara, I don't think is a part of daily life in all over Anatolia. But in Istanbul, yes, yes, especially. 
in our um, milieu, people they started to cook more, to spend time more at home, etc. Thank you. If there aren't other questions, it's possible to finish. Are you any other question? The last question, Roger. Oh, okay. Uh, it's possible that you read the chat? Yes, I have a very specific question. Do you know where hummus comes from originally? <laughs> uh, hummus is a Middle East dish. And when I say Middle East, um, forget about the countries and think about a little bit to the past to the medieval era to medieval era where there's an abbasid empire there and later on ottomans etc so it is an old dish and probably it is one of the dish prepared by a uh, arabic christian people uh, prepared during lent lent you know uh, the period in which christians they don't consume any animal food products so because it is made from chickpeas so I can't say it is originated from Syria or Lebanon or Palestine or Turkey. I may say it is a Middle East dish, which is uh, really old since the maybe medieval era. So mostly um, southeast of Turkey um, is specialized in making hummus today and also Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, etc. this region. And hummus became really popular also in European cuisine today, I think. <laughs> okay, very interesting also this question of Alice. Yes. Thank you, Alice, Thank for you. your question. Mm -hmm. Other question? I think no. Okay, thank you very much, Oj. It's very, very interesting your uh, you. lesson yes. about, about food. Uh, and uh, thank you absolutely for your presentation. And I hope to see you in presence uh, in another occasion in uh, Istanbul, uh, for example, <laughs> for the first time for me when I arrive in, uh, in Turkey uh, yeah. in the next year or uh, when it's possible. And uh, uh, then is to uh, have a good uh, dinner now because it, for you is uh, absolutely the time for yeah, uh, for this. <laughs> A little bit late, yes. Uh, this is a good time for you. Also. And then I add, then you, I, I hope that it's possible to continue in this important uh, memorandum uh, of understanding uh, with uh, Polenzo and your university. And then I believe that is very important. And then is to now I am very appetite of uh, uh, your cuisine, absolutely. But it's not possible mm -hmm. uh, this evening uh, for me uh cooking uh turkish food <laughs> but now it's very very uh more attention to to this uh to your cuisine thank you very much uh, good evening thank you have a good time good evening also you good luck for all want to say okay. good evening uh, to other students uh, turkish students welcome and then i very pleased that you stay here and then I hope to, to see you in another occasion. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ciao. Ciao.